East High is an amazing show because the people behind the camera and in front of the camera are all Latinos. And we get to write Latino characters that are different. Oh, it's one of the highest ranking shows in Hulu. So it just goes to tell you the power of the web and also the power of the Latino audience. We are Jacob Aguilar and Vanessa de la Season two dropped the 9th of July and the 12th they were picking it up for the third season because the kids binge watch. It's, it's content on demand. The writers on this show are great writers. They put their flavor, the Latino flavor, authentic flavor. So we brought our flavor in and that's what the show's about. My name is Chara Toledo, and I am an Enya writer. Hi, I'm Rick Nahara. I'm a writer, author, comedian, director, producer. I do it all because I'm the son of two Enyes. I'm from Puerto Rico. And I was born and raised there, but I went to, when I was 18, I went to Swarthmore College. My name is Matilde Rosario Toledo Davila, and I was born the day of a hurricane. I, you know, craziness. So from, from Rosario, which is my middle name, comes Charo. So they say Charo Toledo. And I thought, and that was it, my name. Everybody, you know, thinks about Hollywood. You gotta go to Hollywood and you gotta go and make it. And, you know, like Rita Moreno, and Chile Rivera. These are Puerto Rican men. I gotta go, I'm gonna do it, I'm gonna make it. And you come here and basically there was around, I would say 50, 60, 100 women all wanting, all running for one part of a maid. That was one stereotype. The other stereotype is the whore. And then I realized, how can I expect a white male to be writing my part? So I said, I want to write and I want to have a career. I want to give other women the opportunity to do my ma monologues so that I, you know, I share the wealth. Like 1910 is when the, the Nahiras came from Chihuahua to New Mexico. And when I asked my grandfather, when did you cross the border? He said, when I crossed the border, there wasn't one. And there wasn't. The actual state of New Mexico was a territory. that wasn't even a state. So a lot of times we have not seen how we contribute to this country and they have not seen our stories really told. Latinos are a huge part of the population, yet we're less than 5% are on film and in the 200 biggest grossing films. We in entertainment almost have a, a bigger duty to tell a story and tell a human story and a story that uplifts people. But shows like East Los High are, are telling our stories and it's a multifaceted story. And so if a young high school kid look, watches this show or younger and looks and sees himself, then that gives him idea that he's valued, that he exists, that he's real. That's what's happening. La Generación Inés. They are very grounded in the combination of both cultures. And it has taken a while for this to happen. And, and even when we did the, first, the reading for the season three, and I saw all these beautiful 25 kids, young kids in their 20s, um, and Rick, Rick and I looked at each other and we were like, oh my God, um, these roles did not exist when we were their age. And we're so conditioned to not expect to see ourselves that when we do, it's surprising. Oh my God, there's one of us on stage or one of us in a film. Oh, and that's so wrong. It's wrong because it's allowing yourself to, under, to say it's okay that I'm not included. It's like the, we're the uninvited guests to the wedding. We're just gonna sit in the back and not really get involved, but we will watch the wedding and we need to be at the table. So the way we have paved the people before them, uh, they have a sense, they have a voice. At least in this show, they have a voice. There is a new generation of us coming up, an old generation like me that are recognizing it, that are getting on the web. I do want those stories told. It has been because of the democratization of the web, our story is going to be human and it's going to be beautiful.